All right, so to do this problem, what, you, what we now have is 2 sine of 2x minus the square root of 2 equals 0. All right, and what I'm going to do is, again, to kind of prove my point and show you guys what exactly I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a function, a function that you're more commonly used to. Rather than a trigonometric function, I'm going to use the quadratic, a quadratic function. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how we can relate, how we would solve for this. So let's say I have 2 times 2x squared minus the square root of 2 equals 0. OK? It's quadratic, right? There's no sine or cosine. So let's say I said to solve. You're going to do the same thing, right? You're going to add the square root of 2. So if we have 2 times 2x squared equals the square root of 2, then you divide by 2. Now you have 2x squared equals the square root of 2 over 2. Now, what is going to be your next step? That's the million dollar question. Lily, do you know what the next step would be? To solve for x. Nope. Summer, do you know what the next step would be? That's a very good idea. Mackenzie, would you agree or disagree? Yeah, you're going to want to, you've got you to undo the square root, right? Reverse order of operations. Why would you not do this? Divide by 2. Yeah, this is being squared, right? You can't divide out a 2 because that 2 is being squared. You have to undo the squared, then you divide by 2. Make sense? OK, so as long as we're on common ground with a quadratic, I don't want to see the same mistake now once we get into trigonometric. Because ladies and gentlemen, we're going to follow the same steps. Add square root of 2. 2 sine of 2x equals the square root of 2. Divide by 2. Sine of 2x equals the square root of 2 over 2. And now what's the most common mistake? Students want to divide out a 2. You guys, you can't divide out a 2 until you undo the sine, right? You got to undo the sine. This is just like the square root. It's a function. You got to undo the sine of that value. Well, you're not going to divide by sine, but remember to evaluate for the sine, we used, you know, we talked about using the inverse sine, right? The sine of your function is equal, you know, the sine of your angle or your angle is equal to the inverse sine of your value. So what we do is we just need to evaluate for our sine. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to evaluate. And now I'm not evaluating on an interval of 0 and 2 pi. But to find my, all my values, I need to at least find out what, where the values are. So we look at this and we say, all right, when is sine equal to the square root of 2 over 2? We did this last video. You know, we know there's those two points, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, right? Those are your two angles where sine equals square root of 2 over 2. And we also said it's going to be plus 2 pi n and plus 2 pi n, right? I showed you, I explained that last time. So now, rather than saying x equals that, now 2x equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And now 2x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, not divided by n. Well, we still need to solve for x, right? So now. Excuse me. Yes. Hey, do you have Caitlin McCormick in your class? No, I do not. Is she absent? Yes, she is. Thank you. So now, you look at this. Well, so now we can undo the multiplication of 2. Does that make sense now? Because now, just that's the last thing, that last operation that's happened to my variable. So now I divide by 2. And therefore, now my final solution gives me x equals pi over 4 plus pi n. And x equals 3 pi over 8 plus pi n. Cool? Kind of make a little sense now? So just make sure you evaluate for your sign. If there's no constraint, make sure you add the 2 pi n. And then you undo what's happening inside your function to that variable. Okay? So it's just an extra added step we're doing today um, for your homework. So that